The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Nearing sundown in the arid landscape of Central California, a group of hunters gathers to track one of the most prized big game animals in the state. In the vast rolling canyons of San Lucas Ranch in eastern Monterey County, the chill of twilight slowly replaces the heat of day. Soon, the hunter's prey will emerge, wild boar. These wild pigs are intelligent and wary of humans. Catching them out in the open here will take as much luck as skill. Holly Heiser teaches journalism at Sacramento State University. She only recently took up hunting. I used to have a lot of misperceptions about hunting. I used to think of hunters as being kind of bloodthirsty about the kill. As a hunter, some people look at me and say, how can you do that? How can you kill for fun? I don't kill for fun, I hunt for fun, and killing is what you have to do to get the food. But I look at them and say, how can you buy meat at the grocery store and not take, not to give a single thought to the animal that lived and how it lived and how it died. You know, some people think about it and they decide to become a vegetarian. I think about it and I say, I'm going to take personal responsibility for it and I'm going to hunt my own. Holly's professional hunting guides not only know the lay of the land, but also know what it takes to bag a wild pig. Wild pigs are, they're a lot of fun, they're a lot of challenge. They're tricky to get close to, they have incredible sense of smell. The thing with the wild boar, he's extremely smart. They, they learn so quickly that it's, uh, it can be scary how fast they learn. But they have the, the capacity to be extremely dangerous. So uh, the, there's always that little bit of extra risk. I think that's, that's part of what adds the edge to boar hunting for a lot of people. As the hunting party drives deeper into this rugged country, yeah, there's... they round a bend and come across a gang of wild hogs at the watering station. The pigs don't waste any time and immediately bolt up the hill. Holly's heart races as she aims her rifle. I can't shoot a running pig. To me, the question is, can I steady the gun, get the crosshairs on the spot, and pull the trigger and have a clean kill? I need him to stop. Really, it's the moment of, can I make this happen? <sighs> I'm shaking too much. As darkness falls, the hunters contemplate the day and look forward to new chances tomorrow morning. The wild pigs will still be here, good for the hunters, but not so good for the local ecosystems. Pigs are not native to California. They were first introduced in the 1700s by Spanish settlers. And over the years, domestic pigs would inevitably escape and become feral. But that population never grew to be much of a problem. Then, in 1924, a wealthy landowner named George Gordon Moore, wanting something exotic to hunt, purposely released a group of European wild boar onto his ranch in Carmel Valley. When these interbred with domestic and feral pigs, the resulting hybrid pigs spread like wildfire. Experts now estimate there are between 200,000 and one and a half million wild pigs in California. They have been seen in all but two of the state's 58 counties and have even moved into neighboring Oregon and Nevada. Wild pigs are one of the success stories of invasive species as far as the pig is concerned, not necessarily as far as the wildlife habitat and the native ecosystems are concerned. Martha Schaus studied the wild pig population in California as a wildlife biologist for the State Department of Fish and Game. Yeah, there's a lot of pig tracks along here. It looks like uh, probably at least a few family groups, sows, a lot of juveniles tracks in here. Wild pigs have spread throughout many of our ecosystems. They're very adaptable. 
and when they are in an area such as this they make use of the woodland, the grassland, the, the riparian areas, the wetlands during different times of the year and as different foods become available. And because they're not native, they're going to have impacts. Looks like they spent quite a bit of time in here. Wild pigs are opportunistic feeders. They eat both plants and animals. That includes everything from acorns to rattlesnakes. And growing up to 400 pounds, they need a lot of food. Since they tend to rototill the ground when looking for a meal, they can quickly do a lot of harm to the environment. Studies have shown they can cause erosion in sensitive streams, trample oak seedlings, and devour plants that deer and other native animals rely on. They do have a mode of feeding, which is rooting, that can have very great impacts, and therefore, in some cases, great damage. There has been some debate about the extent of the damage, but there's no argument that wild pigs are tough, smart, and fast. And when they arrive, they tip the balance and often outcompete native species. One study in 2007 by the University of California found that 97 types of rare and endangered native California plants and animals are directly exposed to rooting and other harmful behaviors by wild pigs. The areas that we really probably confirm the biggest damage are in wetlands and around wet areas like this where obviously they're just having quite a great disturbance on this kind of fragile part of the ecosystem opening it up for potential for more exotic plants, impacting the water quality. A small number of animals can come in here and, you know, in a short amount of time, really disrupt a habitat like this. We've got them here, now the question is, you know, what do we do with them? It's not an easy question. Wild pigs are incredibly prolific, able to produce multiple litters of up to 10 piglets per year. Add to this the fact that females become fertile at just six months old, and it's easy to see how a population can quickly get out of hand. You're never gonna get rid of pigs. They're here, they're here to stay, whether we like them or not. That's something that people really have to realize before they start to get into a management program, is it's not a question of eradication, it's a question of control. And if they wanna start a pro control program, they have to keep up with it and pretty much figure on that being forever. Because as soon as they stop, then the pigs will be right back. In recent years, state parks and Bay Area public land managers have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to reduce invasive pig populations with varied levels of success. Some biologists have been calling for more aggressive controls. That's how the hunting community has come to be part of the environmental solution. And the pigs have become very popular prey. The explosion of the wild pig population all over the country, but particularly here in California, is, it's a big boon to hunters. It's a, they're a great wild game animal. The flip side is that the hunters, uh, you know, depredating the pigs helps to manage the population a little bit, control the spread. So it's, it's a nice little symbiosis between the hunter and, and the farmer and the rancher, uh, as well as for the environment. Wild pigs have become one of the top big game animals in the state. The pig hunting season in California is year round. Any pig is legal game. And in most areas, there's no limit. Last year, more than 5,000 pigs were reported killed by hunters in California. Yet even with the open season, the pigs still continue to expand their range. It's daybreak back at San Lucas Ranch. After a night's foraging, the wild pigs will soon be finding their way back to their daytime hiding places. Well, we gotta get going, guys. Yeah. Yeah. The clock is ticking as the hunters race out to meet them. As we topped the hill, we found two hogs bedded, or actually a group of hogs. It looked like two at first, uh, bedded in a small patch of brush, which is one of the tricky things they do. The tiniest little patch of brush can hide them. In that ditch. In the ditch, the fence, 50 yards down, right in that, there's that brown foliage. You see him? Yeah, it looks like he's facing right toward me. Okay. Holly sets up her shot, and Philip backs her up. This time, Holly's got one dead in her sights. Oh. 
sometimes when you make the kill, sometimes you're just, you're so focused in the moment, it's like you've fired the shot and you want to see if the animal's down. But then sometimes there are moments of sadness as well. It's a painful moment. And I think most hunters experience that. It's not something you want to talk about it because, you know, we've already made the decision. We eat meat. We're going to kill to eat meat and take a lot of personal responsibility for it. But it's definitely the part you grit your teeth for. And we all think about it. A lot of, I've seen a lot of hunters say, the minute you stop thinking about that, you shouldn't be hunting. Because, you know, you always need to be respectful of your environment. The spread of invasive species such as pigs is slowly pushing our diverse world toward monoculture, a dangerous domain of biological sameness. Sometimes the solutions may seem unpalatable, but this problem is of our own making. And our biological legacy depends on careful stewardship of the unique ecosystems around us.